Well, our special music is sick and not here today, so I'm going to sing for you. I would, but you'd all come down sick then, amen? Well, amen. It's good to, good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen? It's good to know the Lord's with us, and he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Boy, even in your darkest hours, you feel like you're alone, but you're never alone. Amen. You're never, never alone. That's like that footsteps. And I'll tell you what, and you, that poem and also by that song we sang this morning, just good to know the Lord is there at all times. If you would, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. If you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word if you're able to this morning. Acts chapter 3. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. Just good to be saved. Know you're going to heaven. And know that this world's problems can't hold you down. They can't keep you back from serving the Lord. They can't keep uh, you from having the joy in your heart that the Lord wants you to have. Yes, you may not have some happiness at times, but you can have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 3, we'll begin reading in verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up uh, together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles, or his ankle bones, received strength. And, le and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all, the people saw, and all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man, and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that's called Solomon's greatly wondering. If you look back with me in verse 6. Our text this morning says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I'm not going to preach a message that I've titled this morning, Give What Is Really Needed. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, we know that we have several people out this morning that are sick. Pray that you be with them. Pray that you touch their bodies. Pray that you raise them up. Lord, we thank you for the mercies that you have shown to each of us. We thank you for that saving grace, or that grace, that wonderful grace that we sang about this morning, the grace of God that reaches beyond all of our sins and, Lord, reaches down and saved us by faith. Lord, we thank you for that. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. Forgive me where I failed you, Lord. I pray that you'd hide me behind the cross. I pray that Jesus Christ would be lifted up, that he'd be magnified this morning. And, that, Lord, every heart would be moved with amazement and wonder upon him. And Lord, I pray now if there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus Christ, their Savior, if they don't know that they died today, that they'd go to heaven. Lord, I pray that you'd deal with their heart and help them realize they can know. And Lord, I pray that they'd come during the invitation, let's take a Bible and show them how to be saved so that they'll know that they're going to heaven when they die. Lord, I thank you for your love and mercy. Challenge our hearts, strengthen us today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You be seated. We see a lame man here who has been lame from his birth, and they would take him daily. He sat at the, at the temple gate called Beautiful there by, the, by that gate, and he would beg for money because he was unable to work, and naturally so. And he was an older man now. He'd been this way from birth. He was a, a child. Uh, uh, as of a child, he was born that way. And so they would carry him to the that gate and, and there at the temple because people would pass in and out going into the, into the temple to pray. And many times that would be a good place for someone that's in his condition that they might ask or beg, we call it beg, but they might ask alms or ask of money from people because he's unable to work and that way he could help uh, take care of himself that way. He was at least able to do something. 
But as Peter and John came, uh, he gets more than he really asked for. He was asking for an alms. He's asking for money. But that day, he got a lot more than he ever asked for. Unfortunately, in a world that we live in today, most think that the answer to all the problems that we have is money. And they, many times we are constantly throwing money at our problems with the idea that money will fix everything, and it won't. It won't. We live in a nation now, you know, and, and, and everything. It, it seems like everything is, well, we need, to, we, need, we need to raise this taxes or we need to do that. We need to put more money into this. We need to put more money into that. Thinking that our problems in America are going to be solved by money. But I'm going to tell you something. You can put all the money you want to in America into the programs and everything else. It's not going to solve the problems. It's not going to do it. It never has. It never will. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we, we shouldn't put money into some programs and different things, but we seem to think that that is the only answer to any type of problem that we have. In fact, throwing money at it usually makes it worse. Kicks the can, as they say, down the road a little bit. It makes the problem worse, and the problem gets greater and, and bigger. Well, this man had a legitimate problem. Look with me there again, verse 2. It says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, or was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. This man wasn't just your typical panhandler. You can go to a lot of places, and we've had some around here that will stand on the, on the corners uh, of intersections and so forth. You can see a lot of it if you go to Columbia. You see a lot more of it now. Uh, you get off on the intersections, the off-ramps and stuff like that, and they generally are standing there with signs saying, uh, need help, need money, God bless. And on that, on that cardboard, you say, well, preacher, you're just hard-hearted, and you just don't, don't, just don't love people. Well, in a day and time we're living in right now, there is jobs abundantly. You may not like the job, but you know what? Most employers, now I'm starting to nitpick a little bit here, okay? Just, I'm going to run this rabbit here, okay? We got him, we got him going, I'm going to run this rabbit. Say, why? I don't know. We're just going to run it. But we've got jobs. It may not be the job that you want, but I used to own my own business, and I've hired people. And I never hired anybody but what they was already working. Why, preacher? Because it showed me they had some ethic about them, some character. Now, I understand sometimes you're out of a job. I, don't get me wrong. You've got to look at the situation. But many times what it is is the problem today with a lot of this stuff, you see the panhandlers, it's not that there's not jobs. It's that they don't want to work. They don't want to work. And I've seen, I've seen, I've actually seen them stand there and, and had a sign. I remember one of them had a sign that said, to be honest, I just want to buy booze. He was honest. And some of them make more money than you will at your job. And the fact is, though, giving that, and I'm not saying there's not some legitimate needs. Don't get me wrong. But I get phone calls all the time. People call me and say, ah, could you help me? We're, try, we're, we're, trying to get, we're trying to get to Kentucky. Okay, where are you, where are you from? Well, we're, we're from Nebraska. I said, you're trying to get to Kentucky. Yeah, and we're in your area, and we don't have any gas money. We need gas money. I'm thinking, you should have thought about that before you left Nebraska. <laughs> I said, boy, you are hard. No. I'm just saying sometimes you can't help people by helping people. And really what I'm saying is, is throwing money at, at problems isn't always the answer. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's not legitimate needs and legitimate things that we should help with. But what I am saying is this. There are legitimate needs. This man had a legitimate need. In fact, he had two legitimate needs. We find here that he sat there, he, he legitimately, he, he couldn't work. He was, he was lame from, his, from, his, from birth. He couldn't get up and do the work in, in that day and time. It, uh, you didn't have computers. You couldn't sit in an office and work uh, like some people can this day and time. There wasn't th those type of jobs. 
Most of the jobs of that day was very manual jobs that you had to be able to move around and do different things. Well, he was lame. He couldn't. And so he sat on this street corner at this, and, and, and not street corner, but at this gate, and he asked uh, for help. This man, as I said, he was asking for the, as those entered in for prayer there at the temple. He was born with two needs, though. Number one was that he was, had a physical need. He was lame. He couldn't walk. He was unable to. But the other one is, is that he needed a Savior. That is the greatest need in anybody's life. Can I tell you this morning that every single person in this room, you was born with a need before you ever, before you ever exited the womb. You was born with a need. And that need was that you're going to need a Savior, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, in order that you might have eternal life. This man was no different. Jesus Christ had come. He went to Calvary, died on the cross, and, and rose again the third day. And we find that, that this man now, he's sitting here in the temple. He has a great need. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 through 12, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. None of us are good enough. None of us have done right with God, and so we have a great need. He says, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are altogether uh, become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. It's talking about you and me, all of us. We're born with a, with a sinful life, with a sinful heart. In Romans 3, 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We go on over Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. And that death is talking about an eternal death, dying and going to a lake of fire forever and ever once you die, with never having a second chance. I'm sorry, but nobody can pray you out of hell. So there's a great need in our lives. From the day that we were born... Until the day that we die, the great need is, the greatest need is, is salvation through Jesus Christ, receiving him. And yet many times with people think, well, we can do this or we can do that. No, my friend, here's a man that was at the temple daily, and, and yet he had two great needs that were not met by being at the church, you might say. He sat outside the temple, what we would call the church now, but sat outside the temple every day, and he still had his two great needs. One was a physical need. They might be able to walk. The other was he needed eternal life because he was going to die one of these days and go to a devil's hell without Jesus Christ. And every day, every day he was at that church, every single day. Can I tell you something? Church membership won't get you to heaven. The baptistry won't get you to heaven. Good works won't get you to heaven. Going to church won't get you to heaven. Now, all these things are good. They're right. But they won't get you to heaven. And yet many times we, we look at those things thinking that that's going to take care of it. No, my friend, the problem is greater than that. So we find out what took place here. Peter told the man, he said, to look upon him. Look at verse 4. It says, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Can I tell you this morning that the world's looking for something? The world's looking for something that's missing in their lives. You know, when you begin to think about why do we have such a drug problem, I'll tell you why we have a drug problem. It's because people are looking for something that's missing in their life. Why do we have an uh, immorality, a, a moral problem with all the adultery and, and fornication and all that sort of stuff? Why do we have all that problem? Because people are looking something for something that's missing in their lives. Why do we have people who are, are, are uh, they're, they're, they're fighting in their relationships? I'll tell you why. Because they're missing something in their heart and life. They're missing, they're missing something there that they don't know what it is. And we could go on and we could look at every single person. You say, well, preacher, what about war and everything? I'll tell you what about war. The people that's in control of those countries are missing something and they think that another country has it and they're going to go after it. They want it. More power, maybe gold, I don't know, different resources, minerals, and things. And many times that's why those things come about is greed. And they're missing something in their life. Can I tell you what that is, that need is? That's Jesus Christ. People's lives are a mess around us today. 
It's just amazing how many people are looking and looking and think that they, that they can find that satisfaction maybe in the drugs or the alcohol or this relationship or that relationship or, or in material things. If I get this new car, I'll be, oh, I'll really be happy. If I get this new boat, I'll be really happy. If I get this new shotgun, I'll really be happy. If I, if I get all these things, I, man, it's going to make my life something that I've really been looking for. And they get it and they're still as empty as before they started before they started. The fact is, is that people are looking. They're looking. This man looked up at Peter because he was expecting to get something. He was looking for something. You see, they don't know what it, what it is. So they usually look to, for some kind of handout, you might say. But the great need is they need Jesus Christ. You see, the answer to our political problems, and, and I don't mind saying this, but uh, uh, we've got Kirsten here. He's, he's our state representative here, and, and I appreciate him. And I'm going to tell you something. I pray for him. I'm going to tell you something. You better be praying for him. These guys are up there trying to do right, and there's a lot of pressure on them. You pray for them. But can I tell you something? That the greatest need in this country is not going to be fulfilled by a political legislation or something. The greatest need in this country is going to be fulfilled by Jesus Christ. The greatest need in, 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 to, to answer the crime problems is not more police officers, though we've got to have the police officers, and I'm behind the police officers, and I think you need to support the police officers and, and, and encourage them. But the answer is Jesus Christ. The answer to the war in Ukraine it's Jesus Christ. And I know some sitting here may say, well, you can't answer every problem with that. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. In one way or another, Jesus Christ is the answer to the need today. Not more money, not more policies, not more people, but Jesus Christ. It starts with salvation to settle your greatest need in your life. And then as you live your life for the Lord Jesus Christ, it changes your life and it'll change the world around you. When we live for the Lord and we begin to obey the, the word of God, if we would get people back, to, if we get this nation back to its founding fathers uh, like they did, it, it, this, this country was established on the word of God. If we'd get back to that, we'd see a lot of things change. And we've got men and women in, in those elected offices that are trying to do that. And trying to hold to that constitution. And trying to hold to what is right. Boy, we need to be praying for him. The man received more than he expected. I'm sure he had already had, a, had very little hope of ever being able to walk again. I can imagine, you know, here he's a grown man. He'd been lame from, his, from, his, from birth and he never even knew what it was to stand up. Never knew what it was to take that first step. You know, we got all these little kids and everything, and boy, one of the things that, that everybody's excited about with a, a little a, a baby when they get a little bit older and they, and they start, you know, they, they, you, you want them, come on, walk to me. And daddy wants to be the first one they walk to, amen? Walk to me, come on, come on, walk to me. And they sit down and they scoot. <laughs> this man had never walked in his life. He didn't know what it was to put one foot in front of the other. So he never expected to be able to walk. And yet, now he's about to walk. He never expected it. He never expected what he was going to receive. He, I'm sure he had no idea what was about to, he was about to receive from, from Peter and John here. Look at verse 5. It says, and he gave, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He was expecting money. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Sound like a Baptist preacher. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He received something that gold and silver couldn't buy. This man had been sitting there at that gate and receiving gold and silver money. 
No doubt maybe he'd even took some of that money and went to the doctor and said, hey, can you, can you do something about my legs? Can you, can, you, can you do something about my being able to walk? Can you do something? I'll, I'll give you all the money that I've got if you can do that. But they would look at him and say, no, you was born that way. The silver and gold that he had received by sitting there at that gate couldn't buy his physical need. But he got more that day. He, receives, he received Jesus Christ also, as you always get more than you expect when, this, when the Lord moves into your situation. Mark chapter 10, verse 27 says, And Jesus looked upon them and saith, With men it is impossible, but, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. You say, Preacher, you just don't know my need. I don't have to know your need. With God all things are possible. The ability of God is beyond our comprehension. The power of God is beyond our, we can't even fathom the, the power of God and what he can do in our hearts and lives. And we don't even have a great, an understanding really of, of what he does when he saves us like we ought to. But the fact is, is that he can do way beyond you ever, what you ever expected in your life. Why? Because he's a wonderful God. He's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. A Lord, a God that cares for you and me. God is bigger than your problem and he's greater than your need this morning. In this room, there's a lot of needs. Some I know about and probably a lot that I don't know about. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. My God is greater than your need. And he can meet every need in your heart and life. This man received the ability for the first time to walk, but I believe he also received Jesus Christ if you would read on the rest of it as he bragged on the Lord and, and what they, these men had done. We need to lift people up though. Look at verse six with me. Then Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? But such as I have, I, uh, uh, such as I have, give I thee. And notice what he says. This is important. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me stop there. Whew. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're not talking about Dr. Phil. We're, 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 not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not talking about Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, that woman. We're not talking about, we're not talking about any of that, that type of stuff. We're not talking about some basketball player that can, can put a round ball through a, a hoop from about 30 feet out or half court. We're not talking about a football player that makes millions and millions of dollars that can throw a football uh, into the hands of man running just as fast as he can and crossing a, 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 a goal line. We're not talking about a, a person who is able to stand up at a plate and, and hit a ball completely out of the ballpark, even over the, the end of the ballpark, uh, into the street outside. We're not talking about somebody like that. Hey, we're talking about Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. There is none like him. There will never be anybody like him. Amen. Peter didn't say, I'm going to tell you to stand up and walk. He said, in the name of in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Verse 7 said, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. See, preacher, why did he do that? I imagine that they'd probably been religious people come by and say, well, if you really believed in God, or you must have sinned, and so therefore you, you're not going to be. And probably even at that moment, he may have felt that healing and that strength come into his legs, but he didn't know. And that's why he, Peter reached out and took him by the right hand and raised him up because he needed to know that he could stand. He needed to know that there was power in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, sometimes we give the word of God to people and we tell them what Jesus Christ has done for them at Calvary so they could be saved. And they continue to sit. And yet they, 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 they've never received. That's why sometimes, man, you just got to raise them up a little bit and say, hey, listen, Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And boy, look what he can do in your heart and life. What a wonderful Savior. He raised him up. He stood on his feet. And he was able to, he was able to, uh, uh, to walk and he ran and he leaped. And, and the, the Bible says there that immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Our, uh, of ourselves, we have no power. 
We have no power. You say, well, preacher, aren't you a healer? No, I'm not. There's one healer. His name's God. Amen? His name's God. In the name of Jesus, we need to lift people up, though, in their need. Peter pointed him to Jesus Christ as he lifted him up. We need to point people to Jesus Christ, the one who can lift them up out of sin, the one that, who can set them on a solid rock, pull them out of that miry clay, as the psalmist says, and, and set their feet upon a solid rock and establish their goings. They might live for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to lift them up. We need to encourage people in Jesus Christ. We need to be the one that gives them what we can that they might know Christ. Verse 16 says that, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. Through Jesus Christ. The healing of the man gave great opportunity, though, to preach the gospel. Verse 11 says, and as the lame man was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's Greatly wondering. People, when they see the hand of God moving, they wonder. People want to see. They want, they want to know. Earlier I said, I was talking about the fact that people are searching. And then when they see something, they want to know about it. Because they're looking and think, maybe this is something for me. That's why in your life, in my life, people ought to see a difference. We shouldn't be like the world. They ought to see something different in our lives. I'm going to be honest with you. One of the reasons that I got saved is because of a fellow by the name of Jeff Parker. He was my pastor's son. We were best friends. We spent a lot of time together. He went to church naturally, and I went to church. And, uh, but I seen something different in Jeff's life than my life. I tried to obey. I tried to do what was right with my folks. If I didn't, I knew I was going to be in trouble. And my, back then, my dad didn't know what time out meant. <laughs> Time out was if he had to rest his arm and, and get a little more strength back before he went on giving me that whooping. <clears throat> that was time out. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll tell you what, some of the best medicine that, that could be given to people today is, is a good old leather belt. Amen. In love. In love. In love. You love them. You don't beat them. You love them. Well, there's a few times I warned about my dad on that. No, no. Just... <laughs> the fact is, is that we've got to get back to helping people get to Jesus Christ. That love of Christ needs to be seen in our lives. There needs to be a difference that they can see. It gave, that, it gave Peter and John an opportunity as they came running a purpose uh, to, to, to share the gospel with others that they might be saved. They might see a, a wayward person brought back to Christ. That we might bring glory to our Savior by lifting him up in this world. We need to give such as we have is what we need to do. Sitting in this room, I don't know what your bank account is. But I think we could probably all pretty well say, as Peter did, gold and silver, have I none. But too many times we stop right there. He went on and says, but such as I have, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Sometimes it's easier, though, to give the gold and the silver when the Lord wants us to give something else. It's easier to give to a missionary than to become one. We need to become one. You say, well, preacher, I, I don't feel like I've been called to a foreign field. I didn't say you had to go to a foreign field. We're all missionaries or should be missionaries. It might be across the street. It might be uh, to someone in your family. The Bible says we're all ambassadors for Christ. And that means that we represent something. We represent Jesus Christ. And we are to take the gospel to them. We have what they need. We have what is needed in their lives. And yet so many times we sit back and we don't give them what they really need. We would rather pacify them and give them something else instead of taking a stand and living for the Lord and pointing them to Jesus Christ.
You see, I have Jesus Christ as my Savior. I can show him in my life. I can live in such a way that people can see him. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Boy, there needs to be some light come on in, in Christians' lives today. We need to give them what we got we've got the light of the world we got jesus christ Amen. years ago and i've told this several times but i won't tell again because there's a i think one or two new people here that ain't ever heard it <clears throat> world war ii there were some planes out on a bombing run off of a aircraft carrier they went and did their bombing run they was headed back to the aircraft carrier it was nighttime they was flying back in, and generally those bombers, they carried just enough fuel to get there, unload their bombs, and make it back to the carrier. Because if they loaded down too much with fuel, then it would slow them down, and they wanted to go as fast as they could. There was a squadron of nine planes that went out and did their bombing run, was headed back to the carrier. As they was approaching, they radioed the carrier and said, we were on our, on our approach and es estimate this amount of time before there. A man came on the radio and said, we have been ordered into blackout. We cannot, we cannot allow you to land. The pilot came back on. He said, wait a minute. He said, we've got to land. We don't have the fuel. He said, I'm sorry, sir. There's an enemy sub in the area. He said, we have been ordered into blackout. When they order them into blackout, you can't even stand on the deck and light a cigarette. Absolutely no light, none whatsoever is to be shown on a carrier when they're in blackout. As they begin to get closer, they radioed again and, and, and said, we need you to turn on the lights. We're within distance. We know where you're at, but we need the light so that we can land the planes. Uh, just, just turn the lights on me. And the man come back on the radio. We've been ordered into blackout. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot turn on the lights. This went on for just a few minutes, and the man come back on, the leader of the squadron, and he said, just turn on one. Just turn one on. Just one. We can land if you just turn one light on. He said, I'm sorry, sir. We've been ordered into blackout. We cannot even turn on one light. And you could hear the other men on the radios as they was begging them to turn on one light. The man that was operating the radio reached up and pulled his headset out of the radio because he couldn't stand to listen to him. One by one, every one of those nine planes crashed into the Pacific. Every one of them died. Why? Because there wasn't even one light on. You see, as a Christian, you have a light. But the question is, will you give what you have for others to see? Will you be that light that will, light, will guide them into that landing pad, pad, uh, landing, uh, pad where Jesus Christ is? We need to be that light. We have a light. We need to give it. I have the gospel. I need to give it. It's what all this world needs. Mark 16, 15 says, He saith unto them, Go ye therefore into, the, uh, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I have the gospel. I have what the world needs. This world needs Jesus Christ, and I have the gospel. You say, well, preacher, you're a preacher. Yeah, but you are uh, an ambassador for Christ. We're all preachers for the Lord Jesus Christ if you're saved. We have the gospel. Say, preacher, I don't know all those verses. I don't know how to lead somebody to the Lord. Tell them how you got saved. Tell them what's in your heart. Give them what you've got. Share with them. Oh, how they need Jesus Christ. We have what they need. I have the love of Christ in me. And I live in a world of hatred. A world of disgust. A world that don't even know what real love is. But within me dwells the love of Christ because Jesus Christ dwells within me. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. 1 John 4, 11 says, Beloved, if, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. 
That love of God is so needed to be shown to others. There's people in heartache and people hurting him. And it may not just be a lost person, but it may be a, another Christian that's going through difficult times. And they, we need to give them what the Lord has given us that's in our life, that love of Jesus Christ. Hurting people. People who are struggling in life. Christians and lost alike. Thinking that no one cares and nobody understands and nobody realizes and nobody loves what they're going and loves them and know what they're going through. But oh, we have the love of Christ. If you know Christ is your Savior, know how they need that. We need to give them what we have. I have a testimony of what Jesus did in me. Middle of May of 1975 on a Wednesday night. Well, I'll tell you what, I was under conviction. I walked out that aisle. I hit that altar up there. Man, I'll tell you what, Jesus Christ gloriously saved this old sinner. I said that I was saved. I said I was on my way to heaven. I said I was a Christian, but my friend, I'm going to tell you something. I was as lost as a goose in a hailstorm. And I needed Jesus Christ. I tried to do everything right. I tried to be a good person. I tried to say that everything was okay in my life, but I knew down deep in my heart that if I died, I'd split hell wide open. And finally, I was afraid I sat on that. I was, a, I was a sophomore in high school, and I sat on that, that pew with the, my friends and had a, had a girlfriend there, and I was afraid of what they'd say. And finally, I come to a point, I thought, I'm not going to hell for nobody. I got up out of that pew, and I went forward and received Christ as my Savior. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm not what I was. And I praise the Lord for not giving up on me and saving my soul. I have a testimony. I can tell people about Jesus Christ, what he did for me, how he saved my soul. I have an example to, to be shown, to live a life before this world. You see, this world is watching you and they're watching me because they're searching. And if we give them the wrong picture, it'll lead them the wrong way. We find over in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. This world is watching your life. They need a good testimony. They need a good example. We can give that. I have faith to help increase the faith of others. I have talents to bless with. Sometimes it's though it is the gold and it is the silver that we need to give to others to help. I'm not saying there's not. There's times that we need to reach back here and grab out that bill for and, and help somebody. But my friend, we have so much as a born-again Christian. We have what they need. We have what they need. And yet so many times we don't give it. Peter pointed them to Jesus Christ. In verse 6, it says, And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 12, he says, And Peter saw it, and he answered the people, unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob and God of our fathers have glorified his son, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. He said, it's Jesus Christ. We have what they need. We need to give what's needed. But you know, this morning you may be sitting here. You don't know Jesus Christ, your Savior. I've tried my best this morning to give you what you need. But Jesus Christ loved you, died on the cross for you, rose again the third day, took your sins, my sins, every person's sins. We were all sinners. We had a great need. We like that lame man. We was born with a need. But this morning, if you reject what has been given to you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. This morning, come, let's take a Bible and point you just as Peter and John did to Jesus Christ through the Scripture, how that you can have him as your Savior and know that you're going to heaven. Such as we have, we give to you. When it's all said and done, it's all about giving others what they really need. That's what the Christian life's about. 
giving others what they really need, and that's Jesus Christ. Let's bow. Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for a Savior that loves us and cares for us and all that wants to save us, keep us from hell. Lord, I pray that you'd be with every Christian here, Lord. I pray that you'd encourage every one of them to, to give what they have as far as Lord, there's so much in their lives. They have the love of Christ. They have a testimony. They have, that man, Lord, they have so much to be that light of the world. This world needs that light turned on. Lord, help us to give that which we have. And it's all been given by you. We have what we have that we can give with to others because of what you've given to us. Have your own way in this invitation, Lord. Save the lost. Encourage the Christian. Help us to determine in our hearts to give what we have to reach others for Christ. With this, I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with your head?